Hey everybody, welcome back to the Lore Lodge. This time we have the wrong title because I did all the tech stuff right, but God forbid something go correctly for once. To, to be fair, um, so, uh, if anything's going to go wrong, at least it's something fixable in post. Oh yeah, you know, it's uh, we're, we're going to fix it right now. We're going to fix it live. Um, Do it live. <laughs> if anybody gets that reference, I'll be impressed. Uh, Wait, this is yeah. the internet. You so should get today that. though... Yes. We're going to be talking about uh, a couple of things, but primarily the Missing 401-esque case. Hey, everybody, welcome That's back. That's right. Oh, good job. Um, this is just going so well. Um, it's I've, all. It's very on-brand for us. It's very on-brand for us, unfortunately. <laughs> this, is, this is completely common. Um, we are on time for once. We are on time, but we're also, unfortunately, on-brand. Yes. Uh, Unfortunately, you yeah. know what? I think it's I think it's fun. Yeah, but this is one that I actually don't think has been covered by David Politis. Oh, that's even better. Yeah. So what happened here was someone I can't remember if it was on TikTok or YouTube, but someone told me I should check out uh, the disappearance of a man by the name of Matthew Green, and that was in 2013. And the person who said this to me, it actually said, you know, it's it's my cousin, um, and I was like, oh shit. So, uh, looked into it, did a, did a dive. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I'm trying to... <clears throat> it's all good. I'm laughing at North State Native getting my reference <laughs> and being very excited about it having existed within the first 30 seconds of the podcast. It's that kind of night, my friend. Oh, so, uh, let's see. So we've got, um, Control-V. <laughs> also, yeah, we've been mainly focusing on the missing 411 stuff recently because it seems like that's what y'all want to see most. It does seem like that is what people enjoy the most. Yeah. Um... So, so that's kind of why we've been doing that. Yeah. Uh, if if we're wrong, let us know. Yeah. But if like, you guys want to see other stuff, let us know. But that seems yeah. to be uh, what everyone is the most interested in at the moment. Swamp so. Swamp Dweller says, "Sheesh! Look at these strapping young lads." <laughs> well, I appreciate that, Swamp, my guy. Uh, You're too kind. <laughs> so, uh, if if YouTube will load anything at all, oh my God, this is driving me insane. Um, let me upload the thumbnail really quick. Uh, so what happened here, for those who don't uh, do content creation... Thanks, Durfenstein. Um, for those of you who aren't content creators, uh, you, when, you, when you start something up in Streamlabs, what, what kind of happens here is uh, the idea is that you're scheduling something into YouTube, mm -hmm. but um, I could only see the, the bottom portion because mm -hmm. of the monitor. So it popped. It pulled up the the oh, last one instead of this one. Got it. Um, and I don't know why, but that's where we are now. I suppose. Um, I gotta say, can we take like five minutes just to interact with everybody? Because I feel like we haven't in a while before we jump into the case. Well, usually we do that at the end of the show. I know, but I figured just because everybody's bringing up some fun things, like they're okay. saying specifically, um, Aiden spent the last five minutes memorizing anti-French propaganda and. Uh, <laughs> And and Vichy France is a national anthem. And somebody said, "Don't say the French word," but they use the asterisk for the e. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just the, the, the I like that hating the French has become a part of the our brand, our fans. Yeah, you know? like uh, that's that's wonderful. Yeah. All right. Oh, history daddy's here too. Oh, sweet. Oh, okay, I think I actually have everything sorted now. So I'm okay, gonna, cool. I hit save. It's currently. Oh, we're having trouble saving your video. Of course you are, YouTube. <laughs> YouTube's been really weird lately. YouTube is not happy with me at the moment. No. Um, let me see if I can... Uh, so that one's live. This is... Yeah, but so guys, this is this is what being a content creator is. Um, you just constantly fail to do everything you were trying to do correctly. Don't um, say the word. Oh, I've said the word. I'm not afraid of... Yes, I understand that we're uh, deleting the The video country YouTube. that shall not be named. No, 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 that's what I was trying The French? The French? <laughs> the French. It's... The, it's I, you know what the is German French, word French? for French is? What? Französisch. I love that. I, right? The Germans are doing French better than the, the I French think I said are. That wrong, but yeah. Oh my god, come on, YouTube. Please, for the love of God. <laughs> Jaden Vitt said, I didn't start loving your channel until the French hate. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> <laughs> you were just hanging around, like, well, moderately enjoying the content well, until the, the French hate? <laughs> He was like, this is satisfactory, and then you said the French suck, and he's like, I'm listening. <laughs> you had my attention, but now you have my interest. Uh, yes. <laughs> and for those of you who uh, are aware of the fact that I have quite possibly the worst heartburn issues of anyone on the planet, um, I had to pop a Tums before this because I realized I was drinking coffee. Also, there is a discrepancy up there caught up. Um, so, What do you think is in the Wawa cups? What? Cat what said, what, I want to know what's in the Wawa cups. Coffee, cat. What do you think is in the Wawa cups? God, cat. 
I mean, do you want to know the type of coffee that we prefer to Oh, get? no, no, no. No, Peaky Blinder. Let us be very clear. I may hate the French, but my racism towards the English knows no bounds. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, let's just be very clear no. about that one. It's to, to clarify... I um, have met a French person. That's why I don't like them. Yeah. Uh, to, <laughs> if I do have French followers and viewers, I apologize. This is a meme. We're just joking around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like... Also, you know, it's, as long as as long as you're not, he's you know. memeing on the fact that he's Welsh and I'm Irish, and we yeah. have to hate the English. So, y'all can't see it, but there is a Welsh flag on the wall right there. Yes. There's a Pennsylvania flag over there. Yep. I have an Irish flag in my room. So, now that we're here, now that everything's set up, and the thumbnail that I spent five minutes creating and then failed to apply properly yes. is added to the video. Let's talk about Matthew Green. I'm in. Because he's from Pennsylvania. He went to the same college as me, Pennsylvania State University. Um, oh, he is was... from just nor an hour north of where we live, and I was not aware of this guy until I, one of my followers, who is, is a cousin of his, mm. I pointed it out to me. So I started digging into the case, and this one's a little bit different than the general Missing 401 profile because it just has... Uh, less details um mm. but at the same time we talked about this earlier you know it's it, it's weird there's a lot mm. of weirdness regarding it um so i'm just gonna you know lay out the groundwork here tell you who matthew green was uh or possibly is he has not been confirmed uh dead yet or alive uh so mm. there's you know it's uh not to make light of the situation but it's sort of a schrodinger's missing person scenario um so, Matthew was born September 8th, 1973, to Robert and Patricia Green in rural Franklin County, Pennsylvania. Um, Remind me where that is. It's uh, north of where we are, uh, I believe. Um, well, there's a, there's a number of counties. Yeah, so here's, here's the thing about Pennsylvania, if you're not from here, that you have to understand. Uh, we have three cities. We have Philadelphia, Pittsburgh, and Erie, uh, I guess you could count Allentown. Maybe. Franklin County is not north of here. Is it not? It's west. west. Is it west of here? Yeah, it's it's two counties west oh. of York. Oh, I guess he moved to uh, right on the Maryland border. I guess he moved to Bethlehem later in life. Then. Probably. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So the, okay. So Franklin County, Pennsylvania. Here's the cool thing about Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. uh, there is no difference between any of the counties in Pennsylvania that nope. aren't. Allegheny or Philadelphia and all the other ones. Yep, um, 100% true. So we live, uh, well, I live in Chester County. Yep. Um, you grew up in Chester County, too. Yeah, I lived all of my life in Chester County until recently when I'm now in Philadelphia County. Yeah. Looking to come back to Chester, though. Yeah, the The Schuylkill River is yep. like a mile, less than a mile that way. If you go over that, you're in Montgomery County. You might ask, what's the difference between Montgomery County and Chester County? The answer is there Nothing. isn't one. Um, it's, well, Chester's the, I, I, think, I think it's the biggest county, or it's one of the biggest. Population? I think so. Aside from Philly, maybe. Yeah, because it's, there's something about Chester County that's specifically noteworthy, I remember. It's the richest one. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's probably what it is. It's, it's one of the highest. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, so it's, uh, so Allentown is bigger than Erie. Okay, so we basically got four cities. We've got Allentown, Erie, Pittsburgh, and Philadelphia, and then on game days, State College is the third largest city in the state. And Reading. It's okay. <laughs> I saw a post on Facebook that was uh, and Redding, Redding ranked 74th best place to live, and 73rd was the ninth circle of hell. <laughs> yeah, Redding's like, not a place you want to be. I was like, yeah, that tracks. So, getting back to the story we're trying to tell, <laughs> I really need medication. <laughs> um, Wait. <laughs> the email. Oh, what? The, the email about that. You The... The email about that. What email about that? The fact to the about the oh yeah, email. my psychiatrist emailed me a survey to fill out uh, to help you know figure out if I have ADHD and I keep getting distracted and not doing it. <laughs> Cat had to print it out for me and bring it to me at the coffee shop this morning. Oh my god! For me to sit there and fill it out and it's still in my backpack. I had a picture of it. I have not sent it to my psychiatrist. You're, you're too good to him. Uh, I, it's uh, so <laughs> so. <laughs> I'm trying so hard to focus on this right now. Um, okay, so for anyone who... We're just going to put a thing in here that you can skip to this point if you want the, the story itself. Yeah. Um, without any of our personalities involved, which I would understand we're horrible. Yeah. Um, oh, I figured I would just, for the Spotify version, just cut out oh, like yeah, the probably, first like, five yeah. to ten minutes. Yeah. So, uh, so Matthew Green, born September 8th, 1973, to Robert and Patricia Green in rural Franklin County, which we just, just discovered is closer to Pittsburgh than it is to here. Um, 
He was an avid hiker, camper, and swimmer from a young age. He and his siblings and their father would go on hiking, camping, fishing trips all the time, which if you are in rural Pennsylvania, that's really all there is to do. Yeah, that's what honestly, you do. Honestly, I'm fine with that. Yeah. I'm a big fan of just hanging out outside. Uh, mm-hmm. It's nice. Matthew would go on. He would uh, attend South Carolina University, or University of South Carolina, sorry, um, before switching over to go to the best college in the nation, the Pennsylvania State University. Uh, if you are an Ohio State fan, please unfollow. Um, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. <laughs> That's kind of similar to the British and French thing. Yeah, uh, I, I, I am required by law to hate Ohio. Yeah, I'll be um, in Ohio in two weeks for like a weekend party. Send prayers. Yeah. So, Matthew graduated from Penn State, mm-hmm. and uh, I couldn't get an exact year on that, which was kind of weird, but it was sometime in the 90s. Uh, and then in 1998, he joined the Peace Corps, where he stayed from 1998 to 2001 in yeah. Papua New Guinea. So, where does that leave us? Well, when he came back, he became a math teacher mm. uh, in Nazareth, Pennsylvania, which is also where my guitar was made, because um, I'm mm. Martin. Yeah. And if you can't tell, I love this state. We um, should go... I So, in high school, I went to the Martin Guitar Factory like, as part of a tour for a class I was in. We should do that. That would be fun. Group. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. Um, so... Very well liked by his students. Mm-hmm. Just paragon of the community. Everybody loved him. He would go on an annual hiking and camping trip with his buddies in various parks across the country. Mm-hmm. Uh, this trip to uh, Mammoth Lakes was totally routine for him. Mm-hmm. Not at all out of the ordinary. Uh, nobody expected him to have any difficulty with it. Now, what did occur is that they drove... And he drove his Subaru. His Subaru had some mechanical issues while they were in Mammoth Lakes. He left it there. Subaru. Rather than having everyone stay behind and wait for him, this mm. is actually kind of the opposite of the last case we talked about. Um, all of his friends went ahead ah. to Colorado, and he was going to meet up with them in Colorado. Got it. Was there like a thing they were going to? Or? I think they were just going to another, another park. Uh, there, it's weird, because this never had a search and rescue element to it, there's a lot less details about it. Basically, everything that I could find was directly reported by Matt's sister, Tiffany. Okay. Um, so, nobody really expected anybody to have trouble with it. it. The idea was, you know, Matt will just hang around for a few days. His car will be fixed by the 18th. And, you know, he'll hike a little bit more, see the sights, and then he'll meet up with us in Colorado. Yeah. So, that was kind of the, the whole plan here. Before we get into the story of the actual disappearance and the search effort, I want to give you guys some background on the town of Mammoth Lakes. Mm. So, uh, Mammoth Lakes is smack between Yosemite, Sierra National Forest, Inyo National Forest, and has Kings Canyon National Park to the south. So this is a hotbed of national parks, and I want to point everybody point out to everybody that uh, the... Sierra Nevadas yes. are a very, very common missing 401 cluster. Really? Um, yes. A ton of cases. I think there's over 52 in Sierra Nevadas that qualify as missing 401 cases. Um, also, another, uh, another not missing 401 case, but another strange case that popped up was the case of, uh, God, what were their names? Um, why is this, why am I blanking on this? Um... I didn't plan for this segue. I just it popped into my head. Uh, there was that couple with their dog and their baby that were found dead in the Sierra Nevada, in the Sierra Nevadas on a day hike. Um, still had water, still had food. They were only like a mile down the trail, if I remember correctly. And I would imagine not. Super weird case. Like, and the uh, I you know I was keeping up with it. The cause of death was like heat stroke or something, but it didn't actually make sense. Um, I'll have to look more deeply into that and do a a follow-up to it, but, um, let's see, uh, couple and toddler found dead. There we go. This is, like, the worst thing. Um, John Garish. Yeah, there we go. So, John Garish and, um, his wife, Ellen Chung, and their one-year-old daughter, Miju. Okay. Uh, so they did say it was hyperthermia. So, I was covering this back when it happened, uh, last summer. Mm-hmm. And none of it totally made any sense. They died on a hiking trail near Yosemite. Um, I'm going to click on that. I'll have to find the exact trail. I would be 
interested to know if it's the same one. I don't think it is. Uh, but, yeah, so they died from environmental exposure. Okay. Uh, the details, in my opinion, didn't totally make sense. Um, okay. So, Mammoth Lakes is, as I said, in between a whole bunch of national parks. Mm-hmm. Um, the town itself is beautiful. I was looking at pictures of it. It is absolutely gorgeous. And it's not really a dangerous area in terms of the hiking trails and everything. Unless mm-hmm. you're going out of your way to put yourself in danger, mm-hmm. that is, it's not a problematic area. It's a ski slope. Like, it's it's like you and me going to Elk. Okay. It's not, not a big deal at all. Got it. Um, Mammoth Lakes as a town has an average temperature in the summer in July of 78 degrees Fahrenheit. It is about 7,881 feet in elevation, okay. and the humidity there is very, very low. Uh, okay. On the day that Matthew Green went missing, the high was 82 degrees Fahrenheit, and mm-hmm. that's it was about 81 when he placed his last phone call, his last known phone call at 4.30 p.m. to the auto repair shop, okay. and then it would have been around 70 to 75 when he last communicated with anyone via cell phone, which was a text message that he sent around 8.30 p.m. Okay. Uh, to give you guys some background on Matt himself, he was 5'11", he was 155 pounds, 39 years old, uh, you know, light brown hair, pretty good looking guy, uh, he's in the thumbnail, uh, blue eyes, you know, just, you know, all American looking dude. Mm-hmm. And he was in phenomenal shape for his age. Okay. Like, this is a guy who was probably a lot like Jim Grogan in mm-hmm. terms of, you know, physical fitness. And capabilities, yeah. Yeah, he's not the kind of person that you would expect to wander off the trail. Okay. But as we know with a lot of these cases that fall under the Missing Form 1 umbrella, yeah, some of them are hunters and people who are as experienced with the outdoors as you can possibly be. Yep. Um, so, when he was left behind, nobody thought it was going to be a big deal. Mm-hmm. He placed a phone call to the repair shop that his car was at at 4.30 p.m. Mm-hmm. There doesn't appear to have been a ton of information exchanged. There's the, Nothing notable came out of the phone call. What's notable is that that is the last time anyone heard his voice out, outside of on the trail with him. Interesting, okay. Furthermore, nobody who was out that day reported seeing him. Yeah. Like, you know, but again, at the same time, average height, white guy in good shape, wearing sunglasses that you, that's not, you know. No. That's not something you're going to notice. No, not really. I uh, So, around 8:30 p.m. his friends receive a text from him. Mhm. Keep in mind this is July 16th. The 17th is supposed to be just another day. 18th he's supposed to get his car back. Okay. So, theoretically, since they're on the border, uh, it should not have taken him that long to get to Colorado. Mm. But his friends did not wait to file the missing persons report until the 18th. They filed it on the 17th, which brings up the question, what was that text message? Yeah. And also, what was it that happened on the 17th that pushed them to file a missing persons report? You know, could it have been something as mundane as he was supposed to call them? in the morning and he didn't yes I from the details I could gather what I think happened is that his phone was not on somebody probably tried to call him and couldn't get through and at that point filed the missing persons report now part of the reason that that makes more sense to me Mm -hmm. and something that you know the the reason that they might have been on high alert already Mm -hmm. is that he sent them a text at 8.30 p.m. yeah on a night where the civil twilight was 8.47 p.m. That means that sunset mm-hmm. in Mammoth Lakes yep. was 8.47 p.m., which means that it was getting dark. Mm-hmm. The location ping from his text mm-hmm. pointed to him basically on the northern slopes of Mount Mammoth, five miles by foot from his campsite. Mm-hmm. Now, if you are in good shape, fresh, you know, early in the day, yeah, that's a sixty to ninety minute walk. Easy, um, yeah, five you know, miles. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. If you are tired at the end of the day mm-hmm. and have to climb down a mountain, that's much closer to two or three hours. Yeah, which means that he wouldn't have been getting back in until 10, 11 o'clock at night. You mm-hmm. really shouldn't be on a mountain that late at night. He would have known this. So, it, it does beg the question of why was he still up there? At the same time, however, mm-hmm. 
His friends would not have known unless he told them that he was still on the mountain. Okay. So, again, we don't know what he told his friends. All we know is that he was on the mountain. Yeah. Um, and I totally forgot that I was supposed to be reading something uh, to you guys. Um, <laughs> it happens. Yeah. So, let me, uh, let me, let me walk you through the, the timeline here leading up to July 16th. So, I... Uh, hang on. All right, there we go. So, Green arrived in Mammoth Lakes. This is from Climbing.com. Green arrived in Mammoth Lakes a few days before he met up with his friends John and Jill Greco on June 28th, 2013. He set up camp at New Shady Rest Campground on the edge of town and paid through July 7th. John, Jill, and their nine-year-old son checked in at a hotel nearby. So they weren't camping. They were just hiking with him. Mm -hmm. Over the next 10 days, Green and John climbed many of the region's classic routes at places like Crystal Crag, Clark's Canyon, the Benton Crags, and the Gong Show Crag. There are a lot of very oddly named peaks and crags here. Yeah. Um, um, they also ticked off a few of the Eastern Sierra's classic alpine routes, including the North Coulier on North Peak near Yosemite National Park and V Notch on Plum Plumonium Peak near Big Pine. On previous trips, Green kept a handwritten log of his climbs, sometimes elaborate and other times brief. He often checked and reported conditions on climbing websites. During this trip, he wrote on Summit Post, did the V-notch on Saturday, July 6th. We easily crossed the Schrund via a snow bridge on the far left side. We studied the route well for signs of rock fall before committing and only had one baseball-sized rock rocket down during our ascent. Tons of rocks were falling down the U-notch, though. During Green's time in Mammoth, his Subaru was in and out of the auto repair shop. It would get fixed, then overheat, driving up a steep grade, and go back to the mechanic. It was finally diagnosed with a blown head gasket, which would take additional time to repair. Mm -hmm. um, this information was not in... Uh, the sources I was using when I was taking my notes. That's why I saved it. Got it. Because uh, I wanted to get all the information I know to be factual out of the way. Yeah. Uh, so this is, I can't verify this information, but this, I have no reason to believe this is incorrect. Um, John and Jill were scheduled to leave Mammoth Lakes. John had a work meeting in Southern California the next day, and that planned to leave for Colorado to meet up with other friends. That morning, the whole group hiked to Emerald Lake in the Mammoth Lakes Basin, where they skipped rocks and enjoyed the morning at the lake before Matt continued up the trail to Mammoth Crest and John and Jill headed down to their car to begin the drive south. It was the last time any of Matt's friends would ever see him. As we're walking down the trail, I say to my husband, you know, he goes off like this and he doesn't tell anybody. If something happens to him, we are not going to know where to look, Jill said. My husband says, yeah, and the bad thing about it is his car won't be up at the trailhead. Even though Green had planned to leave that day as well, his car was still in the shop. He was fine with being stuck in Mammoth, Jill said. It's not like he was in some remote backcountry area. There were shuttles taking all over the place and he thought it was only going to be a couple days. Over the next eight days, mm -hmm. Green continued to climb classic Sierra Peaks and Roots, checking in with John and Jill via text every few days. Mm -hmm. uh, so, to clarify this, this is still a week before he went missing. Mm -hmm. um, and as we know, again, I want to point out for anybody getting conspiratorial on us here, mm -hmm. uh, he did place a phone call to the repair shop yep. on the 16th at 4.30 p.m. So yep. we know that he was alive and well until that point. On July 8th, Green soloed Regalhoth Minaret, a 10,560-foot spire in the Ritter Range west of Mammoth Lakes. On July 9th, he headed north to climb Dana Calor, a popular 1,200-foot ice route on a 13,000-foot peak near Yosemite. Mm -hmm. uh, later, he sent John an update. The Regalhoth Minaret took less than 6.5 hours round trip, but was scary, and the Dana Calor was easy but fun and had the best ice of the trip. On July 10th, he took a rest day. He called his parents and did some grocery shopping. On July 11th, he took the shuttle to Red's Me Meadow Valley to hike and climb the minarets and Ritter Range once again. Mm -hmm. On the ride to the trailhead, he spoke with Devil's Post Pile maintenance worker. They talked about climbing Mount Ritter, Banner Peak, Clyde Minaret, and the cross-country hike between Edzitsa, Iceberg, Cecile, and Minaret Lakes. He was not sure of his itinerary for the day when he got off the shuttle at Devil's Post Pile trailhead, but he eventually climbed the 12,280-foot Clyde Minaret, mm -hmm. the tallest of the Minaret's jagged peaks. We will get back to why Clyde Minaret has an interesting name later in the show. Mm -hmm. uh, July 12th through 15th, he spent those days doing a cross-country hike on Mammoth Crest, and he climbed Unicorn Peak in Yosemite's high country. So I want to make it clear, he is all over the place. Because mm -hmm. Yosemite is still, you know, a dozen miles from where he was staying. So yeah. he was probably taking shuttles here and there. Um, July 16th, he went to the Mammoth Lakes Library to use the internet. He called his parents and the mechanic. The mechanic was the last call he made. Mm -hmm. Sent a few text messages and made a small purchase at Rite Aid. He paid the campground the next day and the next for the next night and day. So, um, if we're assuming that it was him using the credit card, mm -hmm. 
that probably pushes the time frame back a little bit. Yeah, which is a fair assumption to make. Yeah, you know, um, maybe. Um, but I want to be clear, the last confirmation that I have of him talking to anybody is 4.30 p.m., although it may okay. have been later in the afternoon. Yeah. Since John and Jill left Mammoth, they continued texting back and forth with Green every few days. Jill updated him on details for a trip to France they were tentatively planning for later that summer, and John received updates on the climbs Green had done. This is clearly written by somebody who uh, had access to interviews. Um, Jill grew concerned when Green stopped responding to texts. At first, I didn't think anything about it, she said. I texted him and didn't hear back. Then I phoned him, and my husband sent him a text again. We didn't hear from him. So, that's, I guess, in John and Jill's opinion... When things got weird. Yeah. Uh, I do want to make it clear, however, the account I read from his sister does not include these details. So, again, I do not know how much of this is legitimate. Mm -hmm. That's why I did not include it at first. Got it. This is... I wanted to get through the details I knew. Um, Smart move. Exactly. Because we've, we've had times before where I've, you know, gotten something wrong and then gone back and looked at my notes and been like, ah, right, I'm, I'm actually good at research. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just not regurgitation. Well, it'll be something where like I'll uh, I'll be reading something during the show, mm. or I'll have read something right before the show, or somebody will send me a text about something, and I'll be like, okay, I'll include that, and then I go back later and find out that you know it wasn't true. Yeah, I should have just relied on my notes. Yeah, um, you know, so just like how I made the claim that eagles can carry humans last time. Yeah. I was, I was not entirely incorrect about that, by the way. Not entirely. There are eagles in South America that can carry small children. Yes. Not full grown adults. I'm seeing Thornberry I'm seeing Thornbussy slander in the in the comments right now. Uh what do you mean? Becca's going off about one of those uh, <laughs> What were you responding to? She said bold of you to assume Thornberry knows how to do things as well. <laughs> And I don't know what she was replying to, right, but well, I'm offended. All right. Well, send your su send send your opinions about what Aiden can and can't do via super chat, and we'll read them at the end of the show. Yes. Um. In fact, you know what? Just just roast him. It doesn't even have to be true. You can completely make it up. Yeah. Go for it. Might like well. for example, one time he and I were on a night train in Montenegro, and he shared a passionate night of love with two South Asian businessmen. They did things with ties I never thought were possible. <laughs> That's a double entendre right there. Yeah. Ties, South oh, yeah. Asia. Uh-huh. Ah, ah. Oh, yeah. That's a good one. Come on now. All right. So, uh, see, in from what I had been led to believe, the friends who called in the missing persons report were his friends in Colorado, not his friends from South Cal California. So this yeah. is interesting. Again, I don't know how accurate this information is. It's, there's no citations on this page. Valid. Um, so. In his friend. It's begun. So, after, and here's here's where I get suspicious of this story. Okay. After three unpaid nights, the host of the campground reported the abandoned campsite in suspicion of a missing or overdue person to the Mammoth Lakes Police Department. His sister's version of the story mm -hmm. says that his friends in Colorado called the Mammoth Lakes Police Department on the 17th. I mean, people... See where things are starting to get weird here? Yeah, like, people could be being, mis like, misremembering, but at mm -hmm. the same point, like... This this article was written later than yeah than the uh, so, the account by his sister. Starting to get weird. Not not out of the realm of possibility yet, but weird. Not to get too conspiratorial, <laughs> but what we're reading here could be the cover up. I mean, yeah, could be the cover story for what happened because. Yeah. That's that's a significant time difference between the version his sister told, where they contacted police on the seventeenth, mm -hmm. versus uh, this story, which says that it was the campground mm -hmm. that reported it to the police department. And that could go one of two ways. That th there's two possibilities there. Um, yeah. Either his friends from Colorado lied to his sister, uh -huh. or his friends from California lied to whoever's writing this article. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Uh, but somebody has to be fibbing here. Either fibbing or just they're, yeah. they're misremembering pretty yeah. blatantly. So, so uh, two NLPD officers responded to the call, visited the campground, and recorded the information on police log. Campsite number 164 was left intact, but Green had not returned to it. And that's where we're going to go back to my notes. Okay. Because this is this is where things get a bit hairy. So, as I said before, his last known cell phone ping was on the north face of the mountain. Mm -hmm. uh, 
This places him 60 to 90 minutes from the campsite at twilight. At mm -hmm. the time, he would have likely been carrying a large black and white hiking backpack, bright yellow hiking boots, mm -hmm. crampons, and an ice axe. Now, is that ideal for survival in the woods? No, but it's absolutely better than nothing at all. Well, yeah. Um, Matt was reported missing, according to his sister, on July 17th, 2013. Mm -hmm. Search and Rescue could not launch an investigation because nobody had an exact location of where Matt was when he went missing. Mm -hmm. Apparently, he did not tell people what he was doing that day. The only information we have comes from Matt's cell phone ping. Okay. So, his friends and family initiated a search, mm -hmm. which included his father and a bunch of his friends. Um, and the information that they had to go off of was a single page torn out of a trail guide Mm -hmm. What Matt liked to do was tear out the page for where he was going and then use it while on the trip so he didn't have to carry the book itself yeah. and then reinsert it in kind of like a trophy later on. Okay. This page included a 5 mile by 20 mile area that spanned from the southern edge of Yosemite mm -hmm. over to his campsite. So, a large area. Yeah. Like 100 square miles. Yeah. Like, that's... If you guys remember from the last episode of the show, the Jim McGrogan case, they only searched uh, 18 square miles. Mm. But in that case, they knew exactly what trail he disappeared on. Yeah. So this was a much bigger area. Uh, they checked out Carcassi, Banner. Yeah. They checked out Ritter. They checked out uh, one that started the K that is slipping my mind right now. But there was not, at any of these, a log entry with Matt's name from the dates 16th through where they were. Yeah. Uh, also, his cell phone could not be reached. It was either dead or turned off or broken. Mm -hmm. So there was no way to trace him that way. Uh, he also did not bring his sleeping bag. He did not bring his tent, and he did not bring his bivy. A bivy is basically a small man-shaped sleeping bag, not sleeping bag, tent, mm -hmm. uh, that is less, uh, less weight and easier to carry than your average tent is. Yeah. So... Basically, if you're going for one or two nights, you might bring that rather than your tent. Yeah. Um, that was also at the campsite. What that means is that he did not bring his sleeping bag, his bivy, or his tent. If he did not bring any of those things, there's pretty much a 100% chance that he had no intention of camping that night. That he did not intend to stay on the mountain. He was going back to the campsite. Yeah. So, for him to send that last text message from on the mountain at 8.30 p.m., nowhere near the campsite... Mm -hmm. Begged some questions. Yeah. Uh, so he had also not requested a camping permit for any of the mountains or trails. Okay. So that means that he either intended to camp illegally or did not intend to camp. Yeah. Which, based on the rest of the trip, it seems like he did not intend to camp. Um, hikers checked, like I said, multiple trail trails, but no, none of Matt's signatures anywhere. Um, eventually they did request dogs from the search and rescue team, but mm -hmm. search and rescue told them that it had been too long, it had been two weeks, the dogs weren't going to be able to pick up any scent, it just wasn't going to happen. Yeah. At a certain point they had to suspend the search, and in January of 2014, they would file for a death certificate in the state of Pennsylvania. But, Mammoth Lakes Police Department did not give up. Elaborate. The death certificate was granted in the state of Pennsylvania, but the Man Lakes Police Department kept the case open, okay. which meant having bulletins informing park visitors that there were that there was a missing person. Here's what he looks like. If you see him, please let us know. If you see any of his belongings, please let us know. And it was that if you see any of his belongings thing that brought in the first lead they actually had on the case. Mm -hmm. In August of 2013, glasses were discovered by a hiker aware of Matthew's situation, and while stylistically similar... Like me, he had astigmatism, which meant he had very, very, very specific lenses because people with astigmatism typically have different prescriptions yeah. in each eye. So, for example, this is a one, uh, negative 1.5 and a negative 1.25 or something like that. I can't totally remember. Um, so he had the same situation. So stylistically similar similar glasses, but not his glasses. Mm -hmm. Troy went cold again. Okay. In June of 2019, an author by the name of Jennifer Crittenden presented a book in which she compared Matt's disappearance to that of a man named Peter Starr from 1933. Peter Starr was a actually a, like a rather famous hiker and climber. Yeah. Uh, you know, back when climbing was still kind of a daredevil. It's still a daredevil act, but back when it was really a daredevil act. Yeah. Like, 
you know, not really a common hobby. Yeah. Uh, Star disappeared in the minarets. So one of those minarets that Matthew climbed, Clyde Minaret, is named after uh, a guy named Clyde, whose last name escapes me again, but uh, a, a climber, an mm-hmm. explorer named Clyde Minaret. Mm-hmm. He had, that this one was named after him because he was the first one to climb it. Mm-hmm. So Clyde Minaret, discovered the body of Peter Starr after he went missing yeah. on another, or not Clyde Minaret, Clyde discovered the body of Peter Starr on Michael Minaret, mm. which just uh, weird coincidences here in terms of like this guy climbed yeah. Clyde Minaret just days before disappearing in the wilderness. Yeah. Um, Are we going to go climb no. Clyde Minaret? I hate climbing. I'm so scared of heights. Oh, I'm really? terrified of heights. Heights and spiders, dude. Really? I, I feel like I remember you talking about the heights thing at one point, but the spiders thing, interesting. I'm not a fan of spiders. Rex, Rex hates spiders, too. He, he, I understand. You know the in Chamber of Secrets, all yeah. the like scenes with the spiders? Yeah. He watched like all the Harry Potter movies for the first time with Emma like a couple months back. They like, couldn't even I'm watch. I'm sorry, you say he watched Harry Potter for the first time at 24? He never watches anything. Right. Like, he's watched maybe 30 movies in his life. Oh, he just watched Lord of the Rings for the first time, That's too. terrifying. Yeah. Um, um, Jim Norman hasn't seen Lord of the Rings? And he's... He's been basically your brother for how long? Yeah, right? He actually has seen Lord of the Rings. It's a running joke. Okay. His college buddies. Got it, got it, um, okay. <laughs> that I backed them up on because I'm a terrible friend. Ah. So, back to the story at hand. Um, <laughs> in October of 2019, hikers discovered a skeleton which they believed could be Matt, but it was 78 miles away from where he went missing, which would have been truly impressive. Also, the yes. state of decay that it was in implied that it was several decades old, not just several years. Yeah. So... The resolution to this doesn't really exist. His family filed for a death certificate in January of 2014. Mm -hmm. He is presumed dead by his family. To my understanding, the case is still open in Mammoth Lakes. Yeah. We don't really know what's going to go down there. Um, You know, probably never going to be found. But uh, what I thought was weird about this one was not necessarily that there's a supernatural angle. Mm -hmm. Um we don't know enough about his disappearance to make any inferences in that direction. So what could it have been? Well, the fact that he sent that last text at 8.30, mm-hmm. that leads me to believe one of two things. Because if his phone was not responsive at all, mm-hmm. that means that something sudden happened. Yeah. So, could he have been kidnapped earlier in the day and that text message was sent to throw everyone off, assuming, you know, nobody's going to check on him until tomorrow morning. Mm-hmm. That gives me, you know, 12 hours to get him somewhere else. That seems plausible. We know that there have been serial killers that have operated out of national parks, particularly Yosemite, which is right there. Yep. We know that he met a lot of strangers mm-hmm. out on the road. He seems to have been a friendly guy. So it would not be shocking if somebody had taken advantage of that to uh, cause harm to him. Or, in the absence of human intervention, it's possible that he could have stumbled and fallen down a ravine. Mm-hmm. Um, that he could have, you know, gotten caught in a rock slide, any number of things, that would explain why his phone stopped responding, because it would have been broken. Yeah. So, it seems like it's either going to be, got to be a kidnapping, or, you know, him getting, like, falling down a mountain. Yeah. Otherwise, the phone would still be operable. Uh, and you, you can trace modern phones without them making a call. Mm. Uh, it's just like Bluetooth is usually what's used which means that if anyone was within 50 yards of him at any point Mm. they could have located his phone Um, so all they had to go off of was this one ping at 8.30pm that's the last thing they had yeah I on this one I lean more towards the serial killer side of things yeah because that's the only one that really makes sense to me about, you know, why he would have been on the mountain at that point in time. Mm. Because he he was experienced. He would have known that you shouldn't be up there at night. Um, can you look up if there are mountain lions in the area, by the way? Yeah, give me the really specific area. Uh, oh. Mammoth Mountain in California. Uh, pull it up, Jamie. Uh, <laughs> so, I, I, I mean, for me, the, the, the most plausible answer here is serial killer. Or is, at, at the very least, crime. Human intervention. Because at, how could... How could you just go missing? You know? Mm-hmm. Um, and for me, it really is the phone aspect. Because it's... For, for somebody to simply stop responding, 
one of two things has to happen. They have to have the phone crushed mm -hmm. or broken, or somebody has to turn it off. Matt would not have turned it off himself. Matt would not have, you know, been on the mountain at that time of night if he was in control. So it seems to me that the, the one real answer that's possible here is somebody uh, intervened, so to speak. Yeah. I don't know, what do you think? I think that makes sense. Also, it's, uh, I believe, is Mammoth Lakes anywhere near? Because there's Mammoth Lakes. Mammoth Lakes is the town that is okay, yeah, so next they, to the mountain. They have specific guidelines in relation to mountain lions in, in general. Mm -hmm. So I would say, yes, mountain lions are definitely in the area. Yeah, if there's guidelines, there usually is a reason for the guidelines. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um... Yeah, I think the serial killer thing makes sense, but... Or at the very least, kidnapper. Yeah. But, if not a serial killer, necessarily. Yeah, I mean, well, the only thing there is because there was never a ransom, and I, I can't imagine that he would be a prime target for human trafficking. Probably not. So, that's why I would lean more towards the serial killer thing. Um, Crime of opportunity, I guess. Maybe. Yeah. I mean, it could have been some, some of the simplest, somebody... Stabbed him. Yeah. I took a shit. Yeah. Or, or literally, I don't know. I mean, he just, he could have just done, wanted to go for a late climb somewhere and fell. You would think he would have let people know, though. Mm -hmm. You know? I, I mean, the problem is with the stuff like that, as with any dangerous activity, uh, you, you get a false sense of security when you do it enough. Mm -hmm. And I wouldn't be surprised if he was like, oh, I'm just going to go for a quick climb. Like, you know, freehanded, you mm -hmm. know, just before sunsets, things like that. I wanna, Maybe. I want to bring something up here, too, that I just read. Alien That's serial killer. bothering me a little bit. What's up? Um, let's see, Matthew Green missing. I, I'm going to pull up uh, summitpost.org, which is a site that climbers use to log things and mm -hmm. post missing reports and whatnot. Yeah. So... This one, right here. Oh, wait, this isn't the right one, is it? Yeah, it is. Okay. So this one right here uh, was posted by the Area Search and Rescue Group. But the details of the disappearance were written by his sister, Tiffany. Mm -hmm. And what she says... Uh, Mount Lyle, that was the one that I couldn't remember. Um... What she says here is that, where is it, uh, his car, she says his car had been actually ready for a week, which I, I found odd. That um, is odd. <laughs> History Daddy suggests killer Bigfoot with a lightsaber he got from the alien serial killer. So they're, mm -hmm. they're, they're just kind of snowballing different possibilities. Oh wait, no, that was a different one. One of the, a different story said that his car had actually been ready aliens. for a week. Sorry, so aliens. Oh, of course. Yeah, had to do it. Um, so, but yeah, I just want to you know be very clear here. I Matt's friends called the MLPD, and Detective Hornbeck then called my parents. Matt's cell phone is dead and or untraceable. It's also possible that it's damaged, or he's just somewhere where he can't get a signal. There is no way to tell. And it says Matt has been missing since July seventeenth, twenty thirteen. Interesting. So that July? could be, yeah. This whole thing was July. Okay, July seventeenth, twenty thirteen. I think I'm thinking back to the previous case yeah, that was May. So this, I, I guess, a, a reason for the discrepancy there could be that she didn't make it clear when. Yeah. His friends called the MLPD, but if we look at this one, oh, here we go. Here's the discrepancy. Hmm. Um, Jill called the Norco County or er, called the Norco Goodyear to inquire about the car and was told it had been ready since July 18th. So, it seems that we have an issue of poorly written <coughs> report. Oh, uh, what a surprise! Around. So, we might have to refilm some stuff. Um, that works. But yeah, so what she says is that the it, she implies possibly just through poor writing that. The report was filed on the 17th. 
it could be that the report was actually not filed until the 29th. Um, what do we got here? Seven days after Green's campsite was packed up and put in storage, Jill called the Norco Goodyear to inquire about the car. She was told it had been ready since July 18th. Green had not responded to a message saying the car was ready and he had not picked it up. Interesting. So, interesting. His list of ascents logged on summitpost.org reads like the resume of an experienced mountaineer, and his climb partner said he was skillful on ice, calculated in the outdoors, and did not take risks. Interesting. So, night hike is a risk. I mean, yeah. So he wouldn't be doing that. Um, interesting. Sorry, I'm just like looking through the the story now. The with with the added info. Um, Might as well get all the facts yeah. that you can. So, also, just a heads up, everybody. We will be going to question time yeah, in just soon. Just a second. But this is fascinating because that's that that throws a totally different light on the case. Um, because then it's no longer that they searched for him immediately. Then it's that he had. You know, almost two weeks to disappear. Um, oh my God. But yeah, so uh, so it seems like the the revised version of the story mm -hmm. um, is that uh, Tiffany actually brushed off her mom's concerns on the twenty sixth. Um, interesting. Yeah. So interest. It's a fascinating change of information here. Um, North State Native says, "I used to enjoy my night hikes before I found this podcast." <laughs> Well, <laughs> sorry. Um, yeah, so the story, if you do not go by Tiffany's direct... Branding? I do wonder. Huh. And no, I don't want to say anything that I, that I can't back up. But um, Well, you can say th theoretically. Yeah, I don't know. I just don't want to suggest anything um, without having a chance to look into it. Fair enough. I... Uh, but yeah, so I guess what happened here is seven days after Green campsite was packed up and put in storage, Jill called the Norco Goodyear to inquire about the car. She was told it had been right since July 18th. Green had not responded to a message saying the car was ready, and he had not picked it up. Jill then called the Mammoth Lakes Welcome Center and talked to a ranger. She asked for someone to check his campsite, and the ranger insisted she file a missing persons report. Thirteen days after Green disappeared, he was re re officially reported missing. So, that totally changes some of this stuff. Yeah. Um... And I do apologize for not going off of this article originally. I was going off of the statement from his sister because I figured it was the most, you know... You would think. The most reasonable one. Um, damn. That changes things. Fascinating. Um, it doesn't change a ton, but it does change, you know, the, the timeline a little bit. Yeah. I... Oh, there's more info in here. Interesting. I'm cautious because I know people will say stuff for attention. Um, it's Fair. It happens. But it does. yeah, so, I mean, the resolution of the story is the same. He wasn't found. The death certificate was filed in January of 2014. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's. So this is just. I, I'm just still on the, the fact that there is such a discrepancy there in the report from his sister. And, like, I, I get how it happened, and I get that it was just, uh, you know, she overlooked a detail yep. in writing the story. Yeah. But, wow. Um, Little details are what make or break yeah. cases. Jeez, uh, I don't remember what we said in the video we shot. <laughs> so I don't know where we have to restart it. Um, <laughs> I can just edit it. Oh, true. Sending I guess I, nah, I don't know. We don't know how much. Yeah, I guess it would only be the the part about the search. All the background information is still going to be correct. Yeah. Um, well, I can edit it, make the video essentially, send it to you, and then we can figure yeah, sure, out what we sure. want to change. Right, yeah. You guys are seeing stuff develop in real time. Oh, mm -hmm. there was a Wendussie chain. Oh, yeah. There were a lot of chains today. It's it's still that loading wasn't everything right now. All right. Woo! Uh, okay, we have a super chat. We're gonna we're gonna switch over to question time. Now. We might as well. We have a super chat from Tara Gerdner that says, "Hi, I just want to say that you guys are awesome. And I really love your videos, and I find them very interesting." Well, thank you, Tara. I appreciate that. Much appreciated. You are you are phenomenal. Um, I think Zachariah just wanted to, you know, bring attention to the <laughs> window. Message seat. retracted. <laughs> yeah. Well, because all the other ones he's saying is window. Okay. Well, thank you. 
<laughs> over the dollar. Natalie's just calling us fools. That's fair. And her profile picture has been updated to that of a Bojack Horseman character who plays the young daughter in the show that Bojack was in in the night back. In the 90s. To I remind everyone really quickly, though, since we're at question time. Yeah. Uh, you guys have tonight and next weekend to get to $1,000 to get the sexy calendar. Yes. Um, you are much closer to the Carolina Reaper, and I believe you are in sniffing distance of the fleshy D&D uh, 3D printed figure. They are getting the Food Network episode. So, you guys have surpassed Food Network episode. Love you it. will be getting dishes cooked by probably me. Um... Ooh, I'm gonna. I can cook. Should I do the smoked salmon pierogies again? <sighs> I didn't. Do, I didn't have those. Really? No, I had the mac and cheese. Pierogi. Oh yeah. Yeah. Ooh, smoked salmon over mac. And, smoked oh. salmon pierogi with mac. And yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Hundred um, percent. You guys are gonna. Tr- you guys are gonna learn some stuff about recipes you learn in college. Oh yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, at 500 we will 3D print a D and D style fleshy boy, mm-hmm. which I assume will probably then just like auction off. Um, yeah, probably. I've done for seven fifty, we I will eat a Carolina Reaper, um, and for one thousand, we will do the sexy calendar. Uh, all right, Plaz says. Uh, oh, by the way, is I will tell Archie you love him, but he is with his grandparents at the moment. Yes. Um, Plaz used his uh, his or her member uh, bonus thing to say uh, I have done nothing but listen to the Lore Lodge between the Lore Lodge and Wendigoon for three days. So thanks for that. <laughs> I'll, t- I'll tell him. I'll tell him you said so. <laughs> I'm just still like thinking of your mom and Christian as grandparents. Mm-hmm. Is just that kind of like threw me for a loop because I was like, "Whoa, yeah. it's too early for that." And I know it's just Archie, but like that that just whoa that made me feel old. <laughs> it says she can't be a Splenda friend this week. I was oh uh, from friend. Adam Brewer. Yeah, I was literally a freshman at Nazareth High School oh, the year he went missing. If he never went missing, I probably would have had him as a teacher. That's wild. Um, I guess we also would have been probably freshmen or sophomores at the time. Um, Balancing out Tara's positivity, you you all are pretty mediocre on a good day. <laughs> you know what? That's the best, most honest compliment I've ever gotten. If my good day is mediocre, then I'm doing better than the next guy. No Wait, mind. I'm sorry. What are, What is this stuff about a collar? Oh, yeah. Uh, so they were talking about... Um, Peaky Blinder says that they have millions in crypto. Yeah, so... Do you guys want to buy us a new studio, then? Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, they, they were essentially... You referencing the fact that Kat essentially had to, like, m- make you... Like, poke you with a stick to do what you needed to do. They were like, oh, like, Kat's the reason that he's, like, still put together. And they were like... <laughs> and somebody was like, he needs a... Kat needs a collar for him. And just, like... And then it just snowballed. And I said, remind me of the collar thing, because we're not going to let that one go. Oh, I hate you so much. Um, oh, she never got her Splenda Friend shirt. We should do that. Oh, we should do that. Um, also, love the term Splenda Friend. Yeah. That's very entertaining. Uh, Derpenstein2 for four ninety nine says, thank you very much. Uh, been binging all your podcasts recently, but oh, this you. is the first time I've been in a live. Just wanted to say hi and love the contact. Thank you oh, very thank much. You. Trust us. We, uh, we appreciate Y'all stuff unhinged. like that more than, uh, more than you know, more than you think. Ah, uh, he says he was kidding. It's fake and stupid. Who? What? Uh, Peaky Blender about his crypto. Oh, that's a shame. Why, Ryan, why do you need to gnaw on my knee? I just wouldn't ask questions. Uh, Tara says, I just joined the Patreon yesterday. I didn't hear most of this video, but in future videos, I would really love to see more of Missing 4 on 1. Oh, you're, you, there will be plenty of Missing 4 on 1. Yes. Um, we should have a trailer for something pretty cool coming for you guys on, like, June 13th. Yeah. Um... I'm very excited about it. Yeah. Uh, Zachari- Zachariah Albright says, you skipped my second super chat. Which one? What was it? Uh, how much do you like the Windussy? I've come to embrace it. I can see I'm not going to escape. It is what it is. Uh, and then someone said, Wizza said, me and Zach are in an Xbox party that Windussy. Well, that was not a complete sentence, but I appreciate you. Uh, <laughs> We love Cam Sims. Can the Wendigo or Skinwalker be in Maryland? So Skinwalkers are a southwestern tradition, although you do get similar stuff as far east as like Georgia with some of the Cherokee yeah. tribes. 
Uh, Wendigo would be far more likely mm-hmm. in Maryland. Um, those are Algonquin and the related tribes. The Algonquin don't quite reach down to Maryland, but um, you know, if we're assuming that they were reporting something that was geographically in their territory, then it would also fit for the Appalachians. That's fair. Also, really quickly, I put this in the Discord sometime last week, but I figured I might as well ask uh, in you know real, uh, essentially like you know yeah. live. Uh, I suggested, so I've been flirting around with the idea of doing Thornberry Thursdays once a month of just, like, me creating essentially little mini documentaries that I wouldn't really be, like, you wouldn't see my face. Remember when you were supposed to do that a year ago? Yeah, well, that's the thing. is like, I've been flirting <laughs> with it, but, like, we got bit, I mean, we, we were putting out, like, five videos like, yeah, a, a week, so it was, yeah. there was no time for it. There's still rarely any time for it. But it just as something, like, kind of less consistent, but just, like, something for me that I would be interested in that I'd want to make a video about, for example, like... Uh, a guitar build or exploring some topic that I'm particularly interested in, whether it's, you know, I really like DC stuff, so maybe like, you know, a Superman video explaining why I th- why he's my favorite superhero and why I think a lot of people consider him underrated and things like that. Uh, but yeah, let me know if that would be something you'd want to have any interest in seeing or if I would just be wasting my time and it wouldn't be worth it. So... Um, they mentioned the commit tax fraud shirt. I'm trying to find a link for it. <laughs> So for those of you who don't know, we have lorelodge.shop, which is our, our merch store, but I also got bored last year and started a uh, um, clothing line on uh, Teespring. So uh, here's the, the shirt that Natalie just mentioned. Okay. Um, is thank you number one, and also, what a word, dulcet. I don't even know if I'm pronouncing that right, because I don't think I've ever heard that word before. Uh, much more content of the dulcet tones of my beloved Thornbread. That's the, I, I I'm not love seeing it. I love the the word choice, where the diction there. Where where can you point to it? Uh, it's it's up higher, I think. I don't know. I don't know where. Dulcet. Yeah. Oh, there it is, right there. i n- I've never seen or heard that word before, but I just googled it and I it's very accurate for what I think you were going right. for, and it's a really cool word. From so Durpenstein nice. 2, we have real question this time. Dulcet. Have you ever made any content on the Beast of Bray Road? Yes, actually. Um, I think we have a full YouTube video on it. Uh, and um, I've also made a couple of TikTok videos. Let's see. Uh, Lore Lodge Dogman. What would you what would you want ASMR on? I don't even know. What technically is ASMR? Would I just be like smacking my lips together? Or what, like what is... I don't know. really want it, I can do it. I can try it. But I, don't know. I don't know what it would be. Ah, here we go. Going to... Ah, fair. English major does help with that. I'm an aspiring writer, so, you know, I appreciate good language choice. Grabbing the link for the Dogman video so I can put it in here. All right, there we go. That is the Dogman video for you, Durkenstein. Uh, if you would like to watch it. Uh. <laughs> Ryan says, by the way, I still don't understand what the not deer is. Well, it's... <laughs> neither, do, neither do we. There's deer, and then there's not deer. <laughs> Basically, I mean, uh, it's, it's one of those things that kind of like uh, we did a video about shadow people last week. Kind of like that. It's the sort of thing that doesn't have any sort of established canon or real body of work folklore to it. It seems to have developed more so in the uh, the last you know century or so, uh, and the the reporting is just that it's a deer that is not a deer, that that is incorrect. Uh, some examples, uh, some some explanations have been chronic wasting disease, mm. which is a prion disease. Interesting. So it basically causes deer to uh, behave like like zombies. Um, so that's one possibility. There have been other suggestions where people talk about how they are, uh, you know, it'll be a, a deer that they see and its mouth opens a little too wide or it has mm. sharp teeth or yeah. too many legs or stuff like that. And, and, you know, again, these are anecdotal encounters, so you never know for sure if you're talking about something that's real. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, so that's kind of what it is. The, the whole phenomenon is... Um, you know, difficult to really assess. It seems to have developed with white settlement of the area rather than as a Native American legend. Got it. Um, I've had a lot of people accuse me of, uh, you know, 
appropriating Native American folklore when I talk about the not deer, and I'm like, oh, I have news for you. Um, Why do you want me to munch on collarbones and elbows? <laughs> I was listening. I just looked down. And I'm very confused. Uh, it's not the spot ATW, to munch. ATW, y'all get your daily hydration today? Yes, we have been drinking water. Um, yes, we have. At least been attempting to. They soft want spoken? soft-spoken John Mayer lore. Oh. And by they, I mean it's... I can give you some spoken John Mayer. How did you break both your collarbones? Doing something awesome. Or doing two different things that were awesome but didn't go well. Probably. Run, you I mean, it definitely seems like it didn't go well based on the, the, the circumstances, you know? One of my Thornberry Thursday video ideas was specifically uh, a little mini-doc about John Mayer. Specifically his redemption arc. They want to munch on you. Oh! Well, this is news. I don't know if I'm... Well, I guess I'm technically edible, but, like, I don't think I'd want to be eaten. Yeah, all people are edible, technically. Yeah. It's just illegal. Well, you know what else is illegal? Tax fraud, and <laughs> we incentivize that all the time. <laughs> um, uh, my mother says that ASMR is autonomous sensory meridian response. Interesting. I mean, I see people doing it, and I'm just like, I don't understand what the like purpose is. I guess people uh, like the sound of it. I don't for know. 499 from Cam Sims, how do you guys feel about Bigfoot? Because I want because 100 percent believe in him. Also love y'all vids. Thank you. We do and, have uh, a video on Bigfoot. We do have a video on Bigfoot. Yeah, yeah. Uh, where I, I go into some detail about my thoughts on the phenomenon. Um, I think if Bigfoot is uh, a a real thing, I think that the Native American explanation for it is the one that makes the most sense with my personal. Mm. beliefs about uh the you know the the world in general that we live in a world that is multi-dimensional and there could very likely be beings that travel between those dimensions and uh according to certain native american tribes bigfoot is one of those interdimensional beings that is seen as a, an elder brother figure a uh a protector one who watches over themselves and the forests uh i like that version i think mm. that version is pretty cool uh, definitely better than the, you know, kind of horror movie killer Bigfoot idea. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, my mom watches all the shows. She's very supportive, William. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, even before we had this, she's always been very supportive. Uh, but Respectful cannibalism. To answer your question, North State Native, um, I haven't talked to, uh, to her in a while. I saw her dad, and Nigel, not too long ago, and Donnie and I keep pretty close uh, contact. But, you know, the only downside with talking to Donnie is the only way to communicate with him is going, yeah, it's like, really, it's a lot. Thro watch the video of Donnie throwing the plate. It's one of the most ridiculous, like, just 10-second clips of a show you'll ever see. It makes no sense, and it's fantastic. Uh, Peaky Blinder says, Aiden, you better respond to this. I got four books worth $60 this weekend about Nephilim, and you will make me so upset if you do not respond to this message. I am responding, and good job. Um, I hope joke. I hope one of them was Enoch because if it wasn't I have questions um, also that's something that we have been intending to put on the website uh, I'm trying to find a supplier so that we can uh, sell books without actually keeping an inventory of them because uh, with my organizational skills shipping books would be bad they're talking about consensual cannibalism now because of course Becca At least had to, it's consensual. Because of course Becca had to bring up the fact that you know it's not technically illegal. Thanks, Becca. I'm so excited for you to move back here. <laughs> Correct us about cannibalism. Oh, that's um, funny. There's a guy in Germany in jail for consensual cannibalism. Okay, I do remember that. Story. In his defense, Germany has some weird laws. Like what? Um, I have not seen Secret Skinwalker, Secret Skinwalker Ranch. Um, I owe probably we probably owe all of our um, success to Secrets of Skinwalker Ranch because it came out around the time that I was talking about Skinwalkers, and I think we got caught up in the wave. Um, but unlike uh, them, we don't stage things. Um, 
Consensual tax evasion. <laughs> consensual tax? Well, taxes aren't consensual. Um, let's see. Uh, any plans on linking to the Canon Missing Project YouTube channel since you keep using Missing 411 in your titles? Uh, we regularly do provide credit to David Politis, and uh, I think we've linked Canon Missing Project in most of our Missing 411 videos. Yeah. Although I may have missed it in the last couple since I've been using a new SEO tool. Yeah, um, and, and but yeah, we do we do regularly do shout yeah. outs to Dave Politis. This specific one is actually not a missing four in one case. We use the word in the title because uh, of keyword value, yeah. and we figure if people are interested in missing four in one cases, this one follows yeah. along with uh, with the trend pretty well. It's the I mean we're we're kind of trying to work within those bounds in the sense of like that's what you know in terms of, it's kind of like how a lot of people specifically in a generation mm -hmm. or two above us when they talk about a tissue they'll say a kleenex yeah whereas if we're talking about a specific type of missing person thing which hits all of these specific elements people know that as a missing 411 yeah. case it's it's so, kind of become its own its own beast yeah. in a way like uh, i th that's the thing is i would love to cuz recently what we've started doing is rather than relying on politis's research yeah I've been going and looking up the weather reports, the information, the police reports, doing everything myself yeah. to the extent that the only thing that Politis has actually provided to, I think, our last like four or five videos on the subject was the name. Yeah, um, yeah, this, we're doing all of our own research. This one particularly has nothing to do with David Politis or any of his work. Yeah. I greatly respect his work, and I'm, Absolutely. You know, I think it's fascinating, and I think he's uncovered something truly fascinating. Yeah. But uh, in this specific case, uh, we've, we've kind of stopped using... Politis's uh, stuff. Yeah. Even for our Aaron Hedges case video, it yeah. was that that was entirely um, research we did. Well, I, I did. Yeah. Um, our goal is to try and take it the next step forward. Uh, we're we're focusing on doing all of our in, own independent research and specifically for the longer form content that we're going to be doing in rel in relevance to missing four one one. Uh, we're trying to come up with a new title, but we're still going to probably have to involve missing four one one. Yeah. Anyway, I mean, it's it, it's it's the way. It, we want to provide information worth knowing about cases like this, and people gravitate to that title of mm -hmm. that form of case. So if we want to create awareness about these types of cases, the best way to do it is to utilize the ways in which people recognize yeah. it. So if, there, if we can come up with a better way to get people to recognize it without having to link it directly to that, we will. But that'll yeah, just come in time. I do the same thing with videos like that are about something similar to a Wendigo. Yeah. I'll use the hashtag Wendigo because it's close and people are going to be interested in it if they're interested in that. So, yeah, I, you know, that's definitely something that we're trying to do. Um, but at the same time, right now, we're doing a lot of our own independent research. Um, and like I said, for example, this video had absolutely no input from Politis whatsoever. No, I I don't know if he's even directly covered, or indirectly. I, I don't know if he's even covered this. Uh, yeah. We heard about this case through a, a follower. Yeah. So. Also, in terms of uh, us going public as a company, to so you know whatever, uh, we all know yeah. we all know <laughs> that it would turn into like Dogecoin or something like yeah, that. We're, where we're not be, going public. It'd be an immediate <laughs> pump and dump, and so like it'd yeah. fl fly up and then crash. Yeah, so, not, no. not doing that. Um, we might Wait, do. He going? We might do NFTs at some point. Uh, yeah. I haven't been able to get permission from our artist. I still. Uh, I, fourth uh, Plaz says fourth time to charm. I guess looking forward to the Lore Lodge meetup and the new Thorn Bussy Thursdays. Also, when will the next Weird Bible podcast be? It should be this Thursday. I thought y'all did it Wednesdays. No Thursday. Oh. It should be this Thursday. Oh, um, Thursday. If it if it's not, I'm sorry. Man, I can't believe the last one was. Wow. This was a fast month. Yeah, time's flying, man. Um, is this the last Thursday of the month? It is, right? I um, yes, think so. This is the yeah, last Thursday. Yeah. So yeah, it'll be this Thursday. And, uh, and thank you, Plaz. Uh, no. Let's see. Floriana G just sent us a thank you. Thank you for sending us a dollar. Also, yes, the 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 meetup would be it would kind of require consensualness. Yeah, we're not going to kidnap you guys. No. No, we're not Any plans do on doing another podcast with Mr. Ballin? We'd absolutely love to, yeah. but the man is busy. Yes. Um, Frankly, I'm still not sure like how or why he did ours in the, in the first place, considering... like He liked my TikTok videos. I mean, yeah, but and I think it's awesome that he was willing to do that, but like we yeah. were... Like, the, we fact were small. That, the fact that we were that small and he was like, yeah, I'll do this, even though I normally don't, it's like, wow, impressive. Good dude. Um, what else we got here? Uh... I don't know 
know why, like, several specific people are so opposed to the NFTs thing. I Because they're dumb. It, it does not require... <laughs> I need everyone to understand that the whole cryptocurrency is bad for the environment thing is 100% unequivocally propaganda from the World Economic Fund. Like, that's, that's all it is. It, the International Monetary Fund, the World Bank, and the World Economic Forum, all of them hate cryptocurrency because it decentralizes the economy. Yeah, so, but cryptocurrency yes, is a real yes, currency. Yes, does it? No, well, it, it is. No, it's, it, it's more like in an, a, a digital resource than it is actual currency. It's Why more isn't like it an actual currency? Well, because the actual, like, the product itself is more like a natural resource, but a digital resource so, instead of an actual currency. So how did dollars come to exist? We attributed value to existing things. Gold. That we did. Which is a natural resource. Sure, but after, the, I mean, we got off the gold standard a long time ago. 50, 60 years ago. Decently long time ago. But, and, and for a reason. I mean, like, you can consider that to be like a new gold standard to an extent. But I don't know how well that would actually work out generally. Um, all of the world's problems right now mm -hmm. stem from the fact that we got off the gold standard in the way that we did. Yeah. Um, not necessarily that all of the world's problems are because we got off the gold standard, but uh, th that that is the root cause of most of the world's problems. Also, <laughs> people don't know this. Um, people don't know this, but the reason that the United States dollar is worth anything is because our military enforces the fact that you have to buy oil using the dollar. Um, so the United States dollar is actually not gold-backed, but it is oil-backed. Um, this is backed by something. Well, the U.S. military. Um, we, we literally have a currency backed by guns. Wait. So are Which you, is quite possibly the most American thing to ever So are exist. you saying that the dollar is not consensual? I didn't consent to the social contract. <laughs> Tell me where I signed the social contract. You were born. God, I did not ask for that. History daddy, based opinion, Aiden. Cryptid currency. All right, well, now we got to do it. Now, now we, we got to have a coin. How do we do it? I don't know. Crypto coin. Cryptid coin. I mean, yeah, it makes sense. Um, let's see. Uh, Natalie for two dollars said no NFT. I'm gonna use your two dollars to buy Ethereum. How does that make you feel? Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 uh, yeah, Lodge Coin. I mean, yeah, let's it, do it. It probably. I don't know how up. to do it, but let's do it. Yeah, we'll do um, it. We will be very upfront with people that it is completely worthless. Yeah. We, we, no, we should just tell people don't invest. Like, don't buy it. Do not buy Lodgecoin. But then people will start doing it. Just as a meme. Yo, we can pull one over on the Crypto Bros. That'd be hilarious. Oh my god. Uh, the greatest prank of all time. Maybe we can get on a Criticals channel. Oh my god. Now that... <laughs> we, just gotta, we, we just gotta get on Charlie's radar and have him make fun of us. Yeah. Um, the other thing that I want to do is I really want to go on, uh, like, um, Tim Pool has uh, a like uh, a set of like paranormal and folklore projects mm -hmm. that his company is working on. Uh, they mentioned on their podcast a couple weeks ago how they wanted to talk to a local folklorist. Mm. And I keep trying so hard to get him to notice us. Yeah. <laughs> and it just won't happen because like uh I would like dude I'd go on I'd go on so many big podcasts if we got the opportunity. Yeah. It'd probably be so fun. I know um, what podcast your 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 goal is. Oh uh, right. the, the oh Rogan. Really? Yeah. Oh, I thought you were going to say Thames. Oh, that would be fun. Yeah. But if I can get on Joe Rogan's podcast, I've peaked. That is... That's valid. Um, I, I haven't really followed him much lately, but I did see a video recently from, like, Roadster, like, dot com or whatever, where they did a custom Camaro build for him, like a 67 Camaro build. Dude, it is one of the cleanest mods I've ever seen in a car. Mm -hmm. Really, really subtle, but fantastic looking. You wouldn't crypto a currency? <laughs> You wouldn't print a car, would you? I don't understand why people are so opposed to the NFT thing. I think it's because they, like, associate it with the gambling apes. Or yeah, the gambler, I... What is it? The gambling ape? No, that's one of them. Specific. It's like a board ape. Board ape yacht club. That thing. I'm, we're not talking about that. <laughs> well, but at the same time... Like, toy. Toy. At the same time. 
Uh, I just don't think they're worth anything. Like, I, I don't understand the... Per- like, I understand that you can make money from it, and mm-hmm. that, like, you know, people want to own those things or whatever, but the fact that it doesn't actually exist... Well, that's the thing, is if you're just selling an image, it's really stupid. Like, yeah. the, the plan that we had for them, that me and I, the guy who wants to do it with, with us, mm-hmm. had, was that it would actually, in buying the NFT, that would be the way you purchase, like, your membership to the website... Interesting. Okay. So it's on the it, it puts it on the blockchain, and, you know, and then you can resell the NFT and whatnot. But yeah, um, yeah but it, it was more for fun than anything else. Got it. But also, it can make some money. I mean, in that if we sense, had the gaming it's fine. as well. Yeah. Um, I just I'd rather like have a physical painting in my house. Yeah. If, if we were to if we were to it. yeah if we were to do it, then it would be with utility. Yeah. Um, now see that that I can get behind because yeah, that's what I mean. I'm not saying we just sell JPEGs. Like yeah. That's, but no. Oh, we should make NFTs that just say JPEG, but in different <laughs> fonts. Uh, it says, Aiden, were you aware that Joe Rogan and Gerard Way are cousins? I was aware, yes. What? Yeah, you didn't know that? No! Yeah. It's like second cousins or something. What ridiculous timeline shit. do we live in? Oh my the god. The worst one? Eh, debatable. <laughs> um, NFT stands for non-fungible token. Uh, the idea is that it allows... They, they originated as a gaming tool for limited edition skins and stuff like that Mm -hmm. so that you can only have 500 versions of a skin but you Mm -hmm. could buy and sell them between one another uh the other you know idea behind it was that i it was just a way to sell something that was not so an nft at its core form was not something that was like invented for a specific purpose Mm -hmm. it was more of a descriptive term for you know if you buy a csgo skin Obviously, you're not getting anything physical in return, mm-hmm. but you're getting something that you can use in a virtual world. Therefore, it is a non-fungible token. Yeah. Um, but that does not, you know, that's not what the, the Bordy Piat Club is. Yeah. That's something stupid. Um, this would be, we'd actually tie utility to it. So it would be like if you buy a $20 NFT, you get a three-month subscription to the website or something yeah. like that. Um and that's just basically your digital token saying, yes, you bought it. Mm. So rather than getting nothing, yeah, you get something. Yeah. Um, um, Natalie asked, uh, can she make us NFTs? Also, I like your use of the word frick. <laughs> I think it's fun. I've been wanting to get dang it back into my vocabulary a bit more <laughs> recently. I used to say it all the all time. Dang it. it. No, dang it. Uh, but... It is getting close to uh, close to eight thirty p.m. Eight thirty. Uh, so. Eight thirty. Yeah, that's uh. That's, that's it. How the cookie crumbles. I'm Bruce Nolan. Yeah. Anyway, thank you everyone for tuning in. We will be back next week with more stuff to discuss. Um, and uh, uh, can we have a donation goal for y'all to remake the Ultimate Love Song Collection CD commercial from the early two thousands? Oh, that sounds good. Well, we'll be looking into that in uh, June. Um, (laughs) We will see about June. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, let's let's end the show there. Um, Okay, in our defense, Plaz, uh, we actually did change up the structure so that when we don't have a guest, it is only an hour long. Yeah. Um, We've run long tonight. We have run long tonight. So, thank you, everybody, for tuning in. uh, And we will will be back in a week. Yes. We'll see you. Right. Should I should be back by then? Where would you be? Oh wait, no, yeah, I'm gonna be down the shore for Memorial Day. Uh, I guess I can come down the shore for Memorial Day. Yeah, or we'll do Discord. It's not I'll right. figure something out. Yeah. Um, why is this part of the year so jam packed with Sunday holidays? That's we, a great. We question. had Easter, Mother's Day, Memorial Day. Like, yeah. sheesh. Because the the weekend after Memorial Day is gonna be Could Father's Day. Could the Lord have not risen on a Saturday? <laughs> um. <laughs> You mean arrested? No, risen. Oh, that version yeah. of the Lord. Got it. Uh, no, that Lord did did rest on Saturday. Um, yeah, the Jewish holy day is Saturday. Oh, oh, right. Christian holy day is Sunday. Right. Um, which I've heard some people get really, really upset about, which is funny because, like, God in, in the Bible doesn't say if it was Saturday or Sunday. So it really just depends on when you start your week. If you start it yeah. with Sunday versus Saturday... I consider Monday the start of the week and Sunday the end of the week. Therefore, Same, the yeah. seventh day is Sunday, which, yeah. like, 
people get upset about weird stuff, man. Um, yeah. But all right, uh, Plaz for two dollars said, "I'm living your walls." Uh, also, big JK on the camera. All right, have a great night, guys. We'll talk to you next week. See ya.